few more. We are live. JT here. Welcome to The Huddle. The Huddle is where I sit down with successful people from the world of sport and coaching. It's to learn more about their journey to greatness. Why do I have these conversations? Because success always leaves clues. I just want to take a moment to welcome you. Whether you are tuning in live as we stream into our Facebook community, whether you are watching the replay on YouTube or on Facebook, whether you are listening to the audio on the podcast, thank you so much for being here with me and my special guest today. And I want to remind you of something, that the mind is like a parachute. It works best when it's wide open. And here's my challenge to you. Keep your mind wide open. And if you do that, I guarantee you, you will gain a valuable nugget of wisdom that will help you be successful at the game of life. So I've been looking forward to my conversation with my special guest today. We've been talking about doing this for a while, but you know, it's a great reminder that life is all divine timing. My guest in the huddle today is a former St. FX and Bishops football player. He is the owner and founder of For Life Fitness in Brockville. My guest in the huddle today is Coach Zach Benson. How are you today, Coach? I'm doing great, JT. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, no, definitely, brother. I, I've been looking forward to this conversation. I'm enthused. I have a feeling I had to put myself on the clock there because I have a feeling once we get going, this conversation is going to take us to some great places. So uh, yeah, just grateful for, for you being here with us today. So coach, before we get started, I, I'm a big believer in, in counting your blessings every day. And one of the things that I believe is that our time and energy is one of our greatest resources. So I, again, I just want to thank you for, for choosing to invest some time and energy to be here with me in our community today, brother. Um, and I know that I'm going to gain a lot from this conversation. So thank you again, brother. Likewise, I already got to read your book. So I've already gotten a lot out of the conversation, but I appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. So coach, one of the things that I often like to remind people is that life is a game and games are supposed to be fun. So I'm curious, what is an interesting fact some may call it a quirk that maybe a lot of people don't know about you that you would be open to sharing with our community. Okay. Um, maybe if, I'll, I'll, tr I'll try to do one of each. Like a, a fun fact would be, um, although my aptitude and professional interest is football, my favorite sport to watch, play, and be a part of is actually basketball. It's not something I don't think anyone knows. Uh, I couldn't okay. dribble with my left, so I knew that wasn't going to be an option for university. Um, but yeah, that's definitely my favorite sport. A little quirk might be that I'm, I'm restless. I'm always full of energy. So whether it's like, oh, my shoulder hurts, I'm going to crack my neck to fix it. Like I'm always okay. trying to work on something. Um, so I guess that's the quirk. And then the negative side of that is it's challenging for me to slow down and take a breath sometimes. So I'd say yeah. that's an interesting fact and a little quirk. Okay. And, and what I'm hearing from you, and, and we were chatting about this before we hopped on live, is just, you know, successful people, right, have the ambition, they have the drive, they're, they're coachable. And for people like you and I, it, it's, it's learning to harness that, right, to be more. And it, it's a great reminder that the power in life is really learning to be more. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. So like, when you say be more, uh, what I hear is also do more. So, I mean, I'm, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about like where I'm going to end up at the end of this journey. I spend a lot of time thinking like, what can I do right now, right now, this day, tomorrow, short term for that 
delayed gratification yeah. in the future. I think like one of the biggest things we talk about in our leadership academy is like right now in the present, yes, we want to be here, but this is not where we're going to be forever. So you have to have a little for, forward thinking. Yeah, no, I love it. And, and again, that sums up your shirt, right? Like that dream globally, dream big and think in possibility. So I'm, I'm curious, coach, you know, you were a successful you sport athlete, right? Like you've, you've played at a high level. Now you are continuing to serve and work with um, young athletes, right? You're, you're working and, and coaching. I'm curious, what has been the biggest lesson sport has taught you that you still find yourself applying to your life today? The biggest thing that sport has taught me. Oh, I think I'll, I'll start with leave the ego at the door. So when I was in high school, and this is something I still struggle with, but I've always kind of been like, yeah, I tell the kids, leave your ego at the door. But I've always said, you know, I need a little bit of mind though, because mm. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a business person, like I was a high achieving athlete, et cetera, et cetera. And now I'm realizing that's still your ego, just gratifying itself. So, yeah. I mean, being the one who's te teaching the kids about this, it's kind of funny, like I'm the hypocrite in that situation, but yeah. um, it's really got to the point now, like I just, I tore my Achilles six weeks ago or nine weeks ago playing football and that was 100 because i was just trying too hard in the men's league thing so yeah. i think the biggest thing is like leave the ego when you're younger and then yeah. chase chase passion not competition i stole that from steven out he okay. said that to me in my last year of school when i was no longer playing football and i think he could see that i was a little po'd about how it finished up yeah. and he's like you're so competitive just you're always going to be competitive enough to get where you want to go zach mm -hmm. slow it down and also chase passion and enjoyment because it can diverge very quickly and then it becomes harder to find yourself again so with the younger kids i'm working with just check it now and then it's not gonna be a problem in your mid-20s mid-30s etc yeah well and, and what i love from you and i'll just acknowledge you for this like i love the fact that you said hey this is an area i'm constantly working on and you smiled right so it shows me right there like you're self-aware enough that you realize like growth is a lifelong process so I'm curious with you, you've worked with, you've played with, you've coached, you know, some, some high performers at multiple levels. I'm curious, from your experience, do you think that successful, highly effective people always have a bit of that ego? Like, you know, they, they're always trying to sort of toe the line? Hmm. I won't say everyone because I've met high achieving athletes who like I, I'm trying to give them an ego like, yo, you need a little bit more dog in you. Right. But yeah. again, it's, it's very case dependent. That was a really yeah. good question. Um, could you ask that one more time? That was a good question. Yeah, no, I, I just wonder, like, you know, with the high performers that you work with, that you've played with, that you've coached against, like, do they have a bit of that ego? Like you said, a bit of that dog in, inside of them? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, the ones that I'm watching come through my programs and actually get offers, yeah. they, they have a little bit, but I think they're more coupled with also humility. Whereas yeah. I was coming from a place of, I think, straight ego because yeah. of the, the short, all the short-term successes that I had in my past. Yeah. It can add up, right? And then give you this perceived image of yourself, but that's not really how, that's a different type of podcast, yeah. <laughs> um, that deep psychology and, and inner meaning. But yeah. um, with these kids, I, I do think at least while you're developing, it, it can be beneficial, right? Especially mm -hmm. when you have an older guy around you helping you, because yeah. this is when you need your ego, this is when you don't. So you can kind of turn it on and off. You don't want to yeah. always be like Michael Jordan, because yeah. although he's someone that I look up to sincerely, I think he even in retrospect watching the documentary, seeing how people reacted to him 10, 20, 30 years later. Yeah. I know he still wanted to win, but I think there's probably another way he could have gone about it. Yeah. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to critique the goat. So let's yeah. leave, I just think uh, <laughs> that's a great question. We could probably do an hour podcast on that alone. But I, yeah. I, I think some kids need a little bit more ego and some yeah. kids toe the line quite well. It's, uh, there's only a, a small number of people who I see who might have been like me, but that's great because I can just sit them down and be like, hey, I get it. I was you. Like, mm -hmm. But trust me, now I'm here. This is knowledge that you're going to get over the next 10 years, but here's a, a catalyst, if you will. And then it's up to them to take it or leave it. 
Well, and I think you bring up a great point, right? And I just think, and what I really heard from you was, again, that law of polarity, right? Like, you know, we've been led to believe that everything has a positive, everything has a negative, everything is good, bad, and, and we like to place label on things. But I'm a firm believer that high performers have this, this harmony between being sort of intrinsically driven, but but externally like they, they still like those shiny objects right but but they're able to develop that habit of being able to be intrinsically motivated or driven most of the time yeah i think that's really well said like i think uh discipline surrender and then right in the middle is that there's a flow yeah because when i'm trying to control too much i notice the start things start to become a little more difficult just five percent more difficult every day a little bit more frustration and then when you can kind of find that, you know what? Yeah, I need all these lists. But then now the list's done, let's just kind of see if it takes care of itself. Not takes care of itself, yeah. but let's see if we can do this in a non-stressed out, anxious manner. And then usually when I find that balance, just better things start to seem to happen. You know, it's, it's, it's funny. Yeah. No, and, and it's great. And, and I think of a sports analogy, right? It's that, it's that harmony be, between being process-driven but goal oriented, right? Like, like you talked about, you're always striving, aspiring for more. And that's just part of who we are, right? Like that's human beings it's growth, but it's also understanding, like you said, what am I willing to do today? What reps and sets am I willing to do today to get me to where I want to go tomorrow? Right. And that's the fun game. Mm -hmm. uh, so just to rip off that, when I was, I think 16 years old, I just decided all at once one day, that I was not getting what I wanted out of this life. And I said, like, I'm gonna like, have never stepped in the gym before to I'm gonna go to the gym every day for seven days a week for 10 years. And let's see, let's see what happens. Let's see okay. if, I'm a, if I invest my energy here, I find it hard to believe that the other athletes pursuing the same goal are gonna do all these things that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And then I started to see the results. This is working. I'm in grade like 11, okay? I get a little mass, grade 12. Oh, now I'm the faster, stronger kid. On, this is new, right? So then I took that. Okay, now into school. I'm going to do two or three hour, hours of homework every single day, even when I don't have homework. And the thought that they're never going to be able to catch up to me. Like, I don't know if you've heard what Kobe said. Kobe was like, I'm going to get four two-hour sessions in every day for my whole career. And it doesn't matter how much work the new guys come in and put in. They're never, ever, ever going to come fractionally close to me. So... Um, with me and, and my drive, it was always, how can I do more than everyone? And then, and then I've done what I can do. Let's see where the pieces lie. So I'm not kind of trying to control the result, but more yeah. like my energy. Yeah. Well, well, it's interesting. What I'm hearing from you again is the importance of preparation. So I, I'm curious from you, you mentioned you were 16. Like that is something that most people don't do. And again, not judging, right? It's just the truth is most 16 year olds, aren't doing that. So I'm curious, do you remember, was there this moment where the light bulb went on where you just said, I'm going to put, I, I'm going to give everything. I'm going to put in the reps and sets. Like what, was there this moment or this situation where, where the light bulb just went on? Yeah. But I think that that actually happened maybe six months into me lifting weight. Okay. Like I just, at first I knew that there was something to this. And a little bit of it was like my younger brother had started lifting because he was a big hockey player. Um, so I was like, okay, like he's, he's jacked. I'm the same genes. Like I can't let him be my big brother, right? He's my little yeah. brother. Um, so that kind of started it. But then what was really simple, um, grade 11 football team, I was the third receiver and I was really happy with that. Like there's a grade 13 and a grade 12 that were just taller, different type of athlete, but whatever. They're, they're the guys this year. We went, uh, we went into hand our equipment in the end of grade 11 and a lot of the grade 12s were kind of thinking, okay, do I do grade 13 and we take another run at this or do we leave? And I overheard the things they were saying. They're saying, well, we don't have any receivers next year. Like Huey and Trevor are gone. And I heard that and I was just like, you guys are fools. I was just like, I was, I actually cried. Me and my friend, I, I grabbed my buddy. I started walking down the road to the gym. I was like, I was like, how could they be so disrespectful to me? Like I'm putting in all this work. But I'm like, you know what? I'm in grade 11. They're just not focused on me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my thing next year. So that really, that sense, I think, of people not believing that I was going to do what I said I was going to do, mm -hmm. it irritated me to the point where I was, that's all I needed. That, that lit the fuse. Mm -hmm. And then just now, 
seven, eight, nine years later, I'm starting to not kind of, oh, okay, I'm done with sports. I hurt my Achilles. Let's, let's make it about the kids now, rehab. I still want to play men's league quarterback. I won't probably be playing any more receiver <laughs> the way I was before. But, uh, yeah, I think it'd be fun at this point to kind of transition into sports being actually a fun social activity and not this this flip being switched on. And I think that was just conditioning from playing university football. I hadn't mm-hmm. learned how to take that operant conditioning off of, this is a football game, you better go. And it still felt like all my coaches were there. Like, get up, you know what I mean? Like, it was a weird transition yeah. that I'm still kind of going through. It's been three years since I've been out of school and I'm still conditioned by, in good ways and bad ways, through some of the things I was doing in university. Yeah. No, and, and I love that. Like, as you share what I'm hearing from you again, is that athlete mindset, right? Like the things that we were taught, you know, on the football field were our lessons that they still frame today. And, and, and again, I think it's just a reminder that it's, it's really the mindset, right? And, and just that ability to, to, like you said, to bring the energy, to bring the enthusiasm, bring the passion, it, it's almost like we, we need to learn to harness that, right? To, to, to cool the jets at some point. <laughs> yes, I have, I have to calibrate it because, yeah. you know, uh, the Tommy Knichis was in here last week. I don't know if you've had him on yet, but you should. Okay. Um, he, uh, he just looked at me and he said, Mother Nature, or no, he said, Father Time's undefeated. And I was just, yeah, I don't have anything else to say. It's just it's not my okay. time anymore. For that, for, for that stuff, for the yeah. sports stuff. Okay. So I'm curious. So again, you are the owner and founder, right? Uh, of Ford Life Fitness. And, and the one thing I love about it is it's beyond training, right? Like I, I've gotten to know you a little bit there and, and I see that you, you have a leadership academy, right? You have a nonprofit. Like what was sort of the inspiration that drove you to, create something that goes beyond just like reps and sets in the gym like what what was sort of your inspiration for it yeah i think i can answer this quite simply i needed something after university that makes money i needed something that i felt was for the community and that would also kind of fill a role of what i we could have used growing up and that's like the financial aid and the social uh mentorship so basically what happened is I graduated and I had already planted the seed. So the, I started uh, an entrepreneurship uh, program through the government where they give you some like funding. And I did that. I did that strategically the year before the summer before I graduated. And I made a strategic alliance with a local physio clinic who did like sports physio, but they didn't do uh, like any training stuff. So it was a really nice collaboration there for a while. Um, after that, me and the owner of uh, Podium, Ashley, we kind of said, you know, we're, you got a job, makes you money. I got a job, makes you money. We got more time. So what can we do for the community? So then after trial and error and, tr- and failure and failure and failure, we finally found something that was simple, repeatable, and that worked. So the Podium for Life Foundation is we just do golf tournaments, raise a ton of money, put it in a fund. And then when, when any athlete needs uh, funding, and sorry, sorry, it's not even for athletes. We also do like music lessons therapy like whatever they need just to feel like they're at their baseline we're just trying to provide that baseline feeling because not everyone's born into the same circumstances and there's nothing you can do about that so when when i see a kid with oh i want to try this sport it costs 300 dollars. i don't have any money well it's 300 dollars. here you go like try it and 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 see if it's what you want to do right um Mm -hmm. and that's why we didn't just do it like a lot of nonprofits would be like yeah we will pay like for life fitness stuff for you but we do any camp anywhere mm-hmm. any area well within Leeds and Granville I should say um, but that's a pretty big like there's hundreds of thousands of people in that in that range and mm-hmm. and uh, I mean if uh, if a gym opened up beside me tomorrow that was competitive with me we would still fund that ask someone to go yeah. to that gym if that's what they wanted to so that's mm-hmm. really just like to make sure that there's no barrier for sport for anyone ever so there's already programs like that well if you don't get that funding or you've already used it well then come see us we're independent from them you know, what I love and what I heard from you there was, I love how you, you know, you, you identified the problem, right? Here's a barrier, right? And it's again, for the financial piece, right? And, and a lot of these extracurriculars, whether they be sport, music, right? They do have an investment piece. But you know what I really love that you talked about is that it goes beyond just the training, 
right? Like you will, you know, the music. I even love the fact that you said if a gym opened next door to me and someone really wanted to go there, great, go do it there. And, and why I love it is it, it, what I heard from you was th there was this level of calm and confidence that there's more than enough to go around, right? Like it truly an abundant a prosperous and a rich mindset that, hey, let's create some win-win wins. And that speaks volumes to who you are, especially as an entrepreneur. So kudos to you, brother. I appreciate that. And then I'll, I'll just add, we didn't, I didn't mention the Leadership Academy there. That really, it's going to continue, but that just served a huge purpose during COVID when, uh, so the athletes went from like, I, have a, I go to school, I go to practice, or I go to the gym, whatever, like the routines were shattered for so long for everyone in the world. Right. Um, and I really, I started to get phone calls from parents. Like I'm talking seven, eight, nine, 10 year olds who are suicidal because of the loss of their sports, their outlets, their friends, everything. So I was like, okay, this is what's, what can be done here? So it's just like leadership Academy. There's two things during the pandemic. It kind of kept a sense of community. Well, that's great. Check. We're kind of slowly coming out of that knock on wood. Um, now we're going to continue it and, and bring in guests who also have things of value to add, like yourself, for example. So it's now to the point where the kids have listened to me talk for two, three years. I'm just another one of these to them. <laughs> Some of them are still really keen, yeah. but you know what yeah. I mean? Like you spend enough time with anyone, they become a big brother mentor, whatever. And then you're not necessarily always listening, but <laughs> the beauty of it is there's so many people with similar mindset that we can now bring on once a month a little lecture, a little Q and A for the kids, a little bit of homework so they can do like some self-development. And that has been so good just for developing confidence in the kids that we're going to mm -hmm. continue that for forever. I love it. And, and again, I mean, I feel like I could just talk about, like we could just have a conversation about what you're growing with your academy. So one thing you mentioned, and, and this is why I love it. One, you were, you, you identified a need, right? With these young people, they need a sense of community. I love how you bring in these concepts of personal growth, self-development. And I love how you talked about confidence. Now, from, from your experience, it, maybe even the conversations you had, the informal ones, the confidence that you're seeing with these young people, have, have they ever shared with you why they're, they're feeling more confident due to this experience? I think a common theme in life, and it's something that I went through and always still do go through, is that a lot of people will look at the negative or they'll tell you, oh, here are the reasons your idea won't work, or here are the reasons you should just not waste your time. And to me, that's so funny because when someone tells me I can't do something, I'm like, okay, well, you're just going to sit and watch. We're going to see some time go by, and then you're going to see the final product of what I said I was going to do. Um, I think speaking your goals into existence is, is huge. First of all, like what, what's your opinion on, on that? Just manifesting, like. I believe that we have been programmed with this idea that I have to see it to believe it. Like, it, like I have to have it in my hand. I have to see the money in my bank account. I have to see the mark on a test. I have to see my name on the depth chart first, where you need to be that person today to actually achieve it, right? So I'm what I've seen is you need to think and act as if you've already achieved your goal. That's manifestation to me. I, I, I agree. I really agree with that, that point. And it's interesting, like as you share it there, that that's the difference, right? Because again, coming up with New Year's, I'm sure that, you know, being in the health and wellness space that everyone has these New Year's resolutions, right? The vision boards and everything. Hey, thinking, thinking greater is the first step, but you got to combine great thoughts with great action. And that's what creates great results. It's love cause and effect. I don't, I <laughs> can't stand New Year's resolutioners. When someone comes to you with a New Year's resolution, I don't talk to them. I'm not your coach. I'm not the gym for you because it's going to be gone in a month. Come tell me right now what you're going to do more than other people to get where you want to go. This is your goal, not mine. I'm going to help you. But words mean very little to me at this point as a, I'm the application of training. So you can keep your words. Give me your energy and your effort. That's what I need. Yeah. 
So I'm curious, you bring me up to a great point because, you know, we're coming up to the end of the new year, depending on when people are watching and listening to this. And it's always interesting to me that 90 plus percent of New Year's resolutions fail two weeks in. So I'm curious from you, I think we've all been there, right? We've all said things we're going to do something and it hasn't come to be, right? For whatever reason, no judgment, but hey, it's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to all of our viewers, all of our listeners, from your experience, what has to happen for someone to actually create real and lasting change, whether it's in the gym, whether it's in the leadership academy? What's been your experience? I think sometimes you almost need to hit rock bottom. Like, I almost think you need to be challenged so deeply that there almost doesn't seem to be an escape. And then you just start one step at a time planning your escape. That's all you can do, right? Especially, I think uh, I shared something on Facebook earlier this week. It was like a baseball coach saying, some kids were born on third and think they had a triple. So <laughs> yeah. with a kid like that, I'll be honest with you, like, hey, you know, your parents are wealthy, you're talented, you're, you got all this thing going for you. Now let's take that to the next 10%. Like, let's get you thinking a certain way, uh, acting a certain way and setting the example for the other kids, like that kind of thing, right? Whereas some mm -hmm. kids are born on like, not even in the ballpark and then through just one step, two steps they can create something that you wouldn't have been able to create if you were born on third. So I almost think there is immense benefits for like me not having my father around growing up. Obviously when you're a kid, there's certain uh, cons to that, but I'm at a point now where I'm, it's just all the things that I went through to get where I am now and be who I am now wouldn't have happened if there was someone there always encouraging me, always patting me on the back. Uh, I had to go look for work and find people like me and again, not to, not to be arrogant, so I'm working on that. I haven't found a lot of people that will do what they say they're going to do 365 days a year, no matter what, doesn't matter how you're feeling, what's going on in your life. That's what my lifelong goal at this point is to find people like that and invest my energy on those people, because I know it's going to have a transfer. They're going to pick it up and pass it on because our life is finite, only going to be here for a short amount of time. So it's not just about being, having success for yourself. It's like, okay, how can I take this small nugget that I think I found as a recipe to success, like you said, and give it to the people who are actually going to mm -hmm. use it, right? There's so many people, like the, the, I deal with kids from seven years old to, to like 20, right? So the, the cognitive dissonance is different where they're, with each uh, age group, gender, it's all different. And I just find, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but I think you, you think you know what I was saying. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting, like what I heard from you is it's so easy to look at our barriers, right? Like you, you were mentioning, you know, uh, not having a dad around, it would be so easy for you to focus on that, to focus on the barrier and sort of get into this for better lack of term victim mindset of this, woe is me. Oh, I can't, da, 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 da. And that, and, and we've all been there, I think to a degree, or at least I I've been there, but there's something different when you shift that from that victim mindset to victor mindset, right? Where you say, hey, you know what? I learned and, and you counted your blessing. You found that that was a driver for you that, hey, I'll figure it out. I am going to have this level of ambition and drive that I'll do, I'm willing to do things that the truth of the matter is most people aren't willing to do. And that has served you well as an athlete. It served you well as an entrepreneur. It's and it's serving you well in in the servant based leader. You are working and empowering, elevating and empowering the next generation of people, brother. So I love that you are, are counting your blessings. I appreciate that. Uh, another maybe this could have been like a interesting fact. Like I'm really into um, like psychology, but also like the origin of the universe. What's going on? What are we doing here? So these yeah. types of like deep, profound thoughts, I think have given me like just an ability to look at things from different perspectives. Have you heard of the concept of game theory in math? I've heard of it, but I would love to hear you share. Cause so another, another quirk about me is I am like on the spectrum a little bit, probably with respect to my ability with math. Like I was an honors math student for a couple of years. I was getting a hundred percent in calculus and I just kind of realized I didn't want to go any further into that hole. Yeah. Uh, Cause it really does change how you think. Um, and almost like dehumanizes you in a little bit when you're with uh, that, those types of people all the time. Nothing, I mean, nothing negative about it, but um, so just being with the math, I'm 
always looking for patterns. I'm always looking for like these one percent because at a certain point when you're training athletes, you're trying to find one percent a year. After the first five years you train, you're going to get your noob gains. That's awesome. You're also going to create a bunch of imbalances if you don't have a proper program, but you're also going to kind of be setting yourself up for like good habits or bad habits. Um, so, hmm. could you rephrase, could you answer your question one more time? Cause I wanted to go into that a little bit more. Yeah, I know you were, you were sharing about, you know, sort of that idea of like game theory and, and game how, theory. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. So yeah, game theory is this concept of don't make decisions to win today mm-hmm. or win now ever. If you, if you're living your life that way, you're going to be frustrated. You're going in circles. You have to make decisions as if there's no end to the game because there really isn't. If you start pretending that there's an end to a game, there's someone who's chasing you, right? Like if I, if I look, let's look at my business, for example. If I was going to say, I, I don't need to do any media, any marketing, I'm done. It, it's grown and now it's just slowly going to keep growing. That is not a good thought if you're going to try to take the approach of game theory to make decisions because that's a right now decision. The, the game theory decision is to, okay, well, where are the risks coming now? Competition, new businesses. So game theory is just kind of a nice way to live your life with a grain of salt as if it's never ending. Obviously, it will end, but I find you make better decisions if you pretend that it's not going to because then you're not necessarily thinking about yourself, your family. You should think about those things, but then you start to become more of like a universal person and have like a universal consciousness. That I think at the end of the day is like the biggest thing that we need to do on planet earth across countries, across borders is we need to work together or it's not going to work at all. And it's, it's interesting. And like what I heard from you as you're talking about that game theory and you start talking about awareness is that I think what some people are not a aware of and no pun intended with the awareness is that there's different levels of consciousness of awareness that the first one is like animals right it's simply fight or flight right survive right it's it's you know live or die where there's levels to this like as you said this game and as you go up and you know that highest level being whatever you want to refer to it uh krishna consciousness divine consciousness cosmic consciousness if we're looking at it is one where you start to see that you're just part of the game, right? It's not all about, and that's one of the, and why I share that with you is I know we're getting pretty deep here, but I've learned that <laughs> that's how we separate from the ego, right? Like it's, it's really easy when you're only thinking about, you know, me, that you're actually not living that full life. But then when you start to think about, you know, what can I do to increase my service today? What can I do to better the lives of others? That that's where the fun of that's where the fun in the game of life really happens from my experience. And I, I had a grade 12 physics teacher who came in looking just exhausted one day and he spent the first 10 minutes of the class explaining to us how irrelevant we all are, like how we do not matter. And he wasn't coming at it from a place of like, you're from Brockville, you're never going to get anywhere. It was just like, guys, like he was one of the teachers who was trying to wake us up rather than just beat us through a system that doesn't necessarily develop critical thinkers uh, or at least fails to consistently create critical thinkers. Um, So I've also been lucky, like you say, success leaves clues. I was one of those people who tried, one of those young people, kids, who tried to find people who seemed to also be more woke and learn from them, not their words, but what do their words mean? Because right, words are going to, communicate an idea but if you can find the meaning behind the words it doesn't matter what words they're using it's why they're using it like so yeah, it's tough you got to get to know people you got to get to know what's going on in their life so this whole concept of like getting outside yourself that is how i'm personally getting rid of my ego is having these more profound holistic views on on the world that i didn't have the space for when i was an athlete because my ego needed it was just yeah too much going on at once you know <laughs> yeah well, I think what I heard from you is that ability, like it sounds like one of your superpowers, and I'm a firm believer that this is successful, all highly effective people do this. They, they ask questions from a place of curiosity instead of judgment, right? Like they're just, they're just curious to learn from other people and, and that's how you separate from the ego. So, so that to me, like what I've gained from this conversation is 
you have this curiosity to always ask questions and figure out ways to do things better. Yeah. My mom gave me Legos as a little boy. Like I seriously give your kids Legos. They're going to try to figure stuff out and you never know. So, so I'm curious, one of the work, you know, part of, part of the work I do as the director of sport football Ontario is figuring out ways to like, how can, you know, what can we do to, to build a greater sense of community? And yeah, we're, we're speaking football here, but football is just like the teaching tool. So you grew up in Brockville, which again is, 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 is not one of the most densely populated areas. I'm curious from you, what has the experience been like sort of identifying a need in the community and then building programming in an area that in the past has been underserved? Like what's your experience been? My experience, it's gonna, it's given me more than I've put out and it's gonna always be that way when you're a coach. But it was, I purposely bit off more than I could chew. Um, because I was one of those people where like, it could take two years, it could take 10 years, this is what I'm doing. Um, so the experience has been ups and downs, highs and lows. Like, I mean, going from, so when I was 19, I started volunteer coaching. And then that's when I realized there's something here. These kids want to get better. There's nobody doing this. So I just kind of started. And, you know, it went from, you know, 10 kids on a field for 20 bucks a week uh, every summer, you know, 10 more kids would come and then I'd go back to school and then 10 more kids would come. Mm -hmm. I went about it in like what I view to be like an overly OCD type of like strategy. Um, I am almost always thinking about this. Like it's when you're the entrepreneur, when you're at the, the top of the board, you're always kind of thinking about your job. It does kind of take a sense of your, who you are sometimes um, in a good way and in, in a not good way. Um, but really it's just been, okay, here's a huge problem. Let's slowly solve it. Here's the next huge problem. Let's slowly solve it. And now that I'm kind of seeing, it's not going to be this straight linear path to success. I can finally take a breath and just be like, okay, that's going to be stressful, whatever that next thing. Still, oh, that's still, oh, still going to be stressful. Oh, now I'm going to have kids in a couple of years. It's always going to be more and more and more. So I think for the younger, if there's any younger kids listening, oh, take a breath. It doesn't necessarily get easier, but I think things get astronomically better if you're doing what you're doing for the right reason. It's interesting, like, as you share that and and you're saying it doesn't get easier, right? And anyone that thinks that, you know, I'm a firm believer, and I I learned actually this lesson, I'll share this with you just on a side note. When I first left teaching, uh, we, we traveled with the kids in Southeast Asia. And I was sitting, having a coffee, which is like one of like the simplest joys in my life. I was having this great cup of coffee, seeing the sunrise in Bali on the beach. And I realized that, hey, this is great, but I want to create a life where that I never want a vacation from, right? Like, here's this thing, like I have eat, pray, love. This is the most amazing experience. People would, would give their right arm for this. And I realized I meant to do something more in my life. And that experience has always reminded me, like you said, to always think bigger, think outside, you know, think beyond myself, think of what can I do to serve? So that really came up for me as you were sharing, sharing that idea. I think that's a great story. I mean, I'm going to be experiencing something similar. I, uh, I'm going to be in Jamaica in 10 days and I actually haven't traveled since I was 14 because wow. I've been training. Like I said, when I was one of those people who just did what he said he was going to do, yeah. I was training all the time, every summer, every didn't every day. There's always something you can do. I don't want to hear about that overtraining nonsense. There's something you can do, whether it's mobility or yoga or injury prevention. You can be in a gym seven days a week. Okay, I'll, I'll say that. Don't lift heavy every single day. Your nervous system will burn out, but you can do something every day. And it goes again. That then that drips into the next the next part of life business family whatever you can always do more so anyway so my whole point there was i hope that i have a similar aha moment when i'm over there finally removed from canada finally taking a break so 13 years since i've been able to have a change of scenery um so i hope i hope good things come from that 
Well, and, and that it's interesting that you share that, right? Because I feel like I'm the same way. Like, again, we're, we're guys that like to get up and get after it. But what if slowing down is actually the thing that allows you to speed back up and all of a sudden more opportunities, more clients, you know, uh, you know, more things, more great things, more abundance, more prosperity just flows to you while you're sitting on a beach in Jamaica. Why not? Why not you? I'm going to give it a try. We'll see. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm curious, brother, you know, one thing that has really come up here is that you've talked about, you know, that ambition, that drive, that, that get after it. What is that thing that brings you back to harmony that kind of gets you centered? What is that thing that you're working on, like doing right now that really helps you bring it all back together? Well, funny enough, I think sometimes the process does both of those things. Like, I think the thing that gives me harmony is when I, when I say, okay, I'm not going to do any more emails. I'm not going to do any more of my lists. I'm not doing staff schedules. I'm not doing any programming. I'm going to do what I want to do. Sometimes that's just brainstorming something for my business that's not tangible right now. That's more fluid. And sometimes that brings me harmony. Sometimes it's just sitting down with my girlfriend and my cat watching a movie. Like I'd say the two things that ground me right now is my family and my friends. And then also being in a fluid situation where every day I go to work, the next day could look different rather than I know. And this isn't to say anything negative towards nine to fives, but there's a lot of people who get into a nine to five routine. And before they know it, they're just, kind of a cog in a machine and there's nothing wrong with that but me wanting to be more actualized like self-actualized I like to have a job where I want to start a new program I'm going to start a new program I want to take a program out because it's not working I'll take so like being in a situation where you can actually make fluid decisions that alone can kind of reharmonize me if I'm having a stressed out day what's stressing me out I'm not doing that anymore because I work for myself like I'll yeah. just try to find little <laughs> pockets of peace. However, yeah. I have to lifting weights. That's another one. Watching the kids coach each other, take my cues and yeah. start cue like seven year olds cueing each other. I'm like, what do we you don't need me anymore. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. And, and what I heard from you was, was this idea. It's, it's learning to embrace imperfection, like fluidity, as you talked about and releasing this illusion of perfection, mm -hmm. right? Like that's what it really sounds like. And, and the other thing I would even say, even at a simpler term is this idea is you, you are spending your days doing what you love, whether it's spending time with family, whether it's working on things on your business, whether it's simply sitting back and watching another young person elevate and empower another young person, like you're doing what you love. And that's really keeping it simple, simple. And that's the joy of life. And I think, one of, I think that's a great point. I think one of the hard things about jumping into a risk and trying to be an entrepreneur and actually do what you love is, well, I could do everything right and it might not work out. That's true. That is true. That could happen. But my experience is if you like, so when COVID hit, a lot of entrepreneurs in the gym industry, they just, that's obviously not what they wanted to be doing because as soon as, I mean, every situation is different, but I actually was able to grow during COVID because I was like, I'm going to go even harder into this niche now because why not? This is what I want to do. So I don't know, like this conversation is just so, so much good going on. I'm trying to like pick and choose what, what I want to get into. But um, yeah, I'm very lucky to be in a situation where I have a fluid job. And I think the biggest thing that I'm now seeing is it's going to be a hard thing is I, it's now time for me to take a few steps back, mm -hmm. hire some new coaches, assign. So we like, I'm big on trickle down mentoring. So now if I have a 17 year old in the gym and I know that this kid knows what he's talking about because he spent a lot of time with me and we've gone back and forth. Hey, you're going to run this session today. You know what I mean? I'm going to be here, but you're going to run it. Just finding little pockets of, of, of teachable moments to like, Show the leaders, this is how you lead, but then teach the group, this is how you be led. You're all going to take turns doing it. And then you can kind of see, okay, this kid is really going to need more help with vocalizing. 
to be successful in five years. Oh, or this kid, oh, we got to take that ego back 5% because he's being an off-putting boss. Do you know what I mean? So I am truly blessed. Uh, uh, and just having this conversation with you was a really good reminder. <laughs> Well, and, and, you know, what I love from you and, and I heard, you know, this want, right. And, and you can see this desire happening because I can see you getting emotionally invested with this want, this goal is you're starting to look at how, you know, what can I do to elevate and empower other people? Right. So you want to raise up the bar of everyone. You want to, you want to bring more leaders on because what's going to happen is that you're actually going to be able to serve more people because you're going to be better able to focus your time and energy and leverage that and actually, you know, create more opportunity there. So I love it brother. And I'm just so enthused to see what's going to happen because that's where your mind's going. You're starting to ask that different question. Yes, me too. The future is going to be exciting. We don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be exciting. Hey brother, I want to be respectful of your time and energy. So I have one last question for you. So you, you mentioned, you know, I, I want you to go back and, and let's say we have someone that's at a crossroads right now, you know, think back to where you were at 16, where all of a sudden, you know, the light bulb kind of went on. Like, what is one piece of advice, you know, a, a suggestion you would offer someone that's maybe thinking about making a change? Maybe it's health, maybe it's relationships, maybe it's business, maybe it's school. Like, what is that? piece of advice that you would offer them so that they can activate, move into focused action and start creating some positive momentum so they can reach their next level of greatness. Spend time alone. Don't be, a, don't be afraid to like sometimes be maybe what they would call antisocial, especially if you're trying to accomplish something. Uh, one of the biggest things that I've seen is like outside energy can just throw off an idea throw off a concept. And as we discussed earlier, like most people are going to go off their own experience because maybe they're not actualized to the point that they would want to be. They don't even know what those uh, levels of consciousness are that you were kind of discussing. So um, I would say, hmm, I'm going to change it. Be who you needed to be when you were growing up. Because I mean, I've lived that and I can tell you, you're only going to go good places. Obviously, yes, you have to make money. You have to find some sort of way to create an income from what you love to do. But if you really love to do it, like L-O-V-E, love, then you're going to do it, right? It's easy to talk. I said earlier, words don't mean a whole lot to me. Show me your actions and you'll get my respect right there. Yeah. I love that. I, I you know, I, I think back to that, that Gandhi quote, like, be the change. And why I love that, and I'll just share with you on a side note. You know, one of the things that it's allowed me in, in this, let's say, new adventure in my life is to spend more time with my kids. And my son and I have been able to create a greater connection, which like you, my like my dad was around, but he wasn't a present dad, which is it is what it is. But what I've realized is that whenever I show up and whenever my thoughts and actions are being the dad that I wanted, that I needed that's where my son and I actually have a deeper connection. So, so I love that, like that be the change. I'm seeing it in my own life, right? And, and it's in the area that I'm having to grow in. And, and so thank you for sharing that with me, brother. No problem, JT. Thanks for having me on. I really had a good time and I'll have to uh, return the favor and get you on my podcast and that starts up again. Oh, whatever. So brother, I have a question for you. How can we help and support what you're growing right now? Um, we're, we're in a situation right now where, so the, the center is built, the athletes are coming in, and now it's just a slow burn of more athletes. Um, I think you've already volunteering your time to speak in January to our Leadership Academy, like you've already done more than enough. Um, I don't know, just have people listen to this podcast. If they have questions, I would love them to reach out. I know my mind works not necessarily the same way everyone else's does. So if, if, if you feel like you're like-minded and you want to have a conversation, I really welcome that because I'm on a, a mission of life to find people like you, like me, who can take where us where we're supposed to go rather than staying still. I love that. 
So brother, I, I really want to take a moment, Zach, to acknowledge you. I, I want to acknowledge you for the man you are, the great son, the great boyfriend, you know, the great coach and teacher and mentor, but more importantly, the great human being you are. The one thing I gathered from this conversation is I very rarely meet people that are so curious that all, always want to ask questions of, you know, what can I do to, to be better at this? And it, it just reminded me that that curiosity is a superpower and it's like a muscle. We simply just need to flex it more and more. So thank you for providing me with that reminder. Anytime, JT, anytime. Okay. So for each of you watching this, I want to remind you of something. That knowledge is potential power. It's the focused and consistent application of that knowledge that actually creates great results. As Coach talked about, it's more than words. Your actions every day, right? Day in, day out, rep in, rep out are what actually create the change. So my challenge to you is to take one of these valuable nuggets of wisdom and go apply it to your life today. Not someday, not January 1st, today. And I want to remind you of something. That you are deserving of greatness. You are worthy of greatness. You are greatness. It's your birthright. So now go do the work and get the job done. Have an amazing rest of your day. And I look forward to chatting with you next time in the huddle. Have a great day, everyone.